This is what my head looks like after sewing it onto the body. So you can see how I went all along the base and just sewed it and secured it. Now I'm going to show you how to make the paws. All four of the paws are made the same way. So go ahead and get your yarn that you're going to use for the paws. And we're going to start with a magic circle. Just drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers. And then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take your 375 millimeter crochet hook, the same size crochet hook. Go ahead and yarn over and bring up a loop. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. Then you can take your forefinger and thumb and just hold the base of the six single crochet. You have the two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one of them. It doesn't close. Again, just let go and pull on the other one. Then just take that loose yarn in and pull on that. Then go ahead and turn your work to work into that first stitch, just like we've done before. You're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches. So two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12 stitches and then come back. Now we're going to start our increase rounds. So you've already learned how to make the increase rounds by making the body. We're going to be making increase rounds up to one single crochet into six stitches and then two single crochet into the seventh stitch. But I'm going to go ahead and get you started. If you have a little opening still on your magic circle, go ahead and turn your work over and just pull on that loose yarn end on the back to close up that magic circle. For your first increase round, you're going to be making one single crochet into one stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. Then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back. For the next increase round, you're going to be making one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. Then repeat that pattern all the way around. Okay, so I got you started. I'm going to let you finish now. I'm just going to show you this last increase round. So for this next increase round, you're going to be making one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And then your next increase round will be one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch. And then the next round will be one single crochet into five stitches. And then you're going to stop when you reach one single, the round where you make one single crochet into six stitches and then two single crochet into the seventh stitch. And then come back and then I'll show you what to do next. So I just finished my last increase round which was one single crochet into six stitches and then two single crochet into the seventh stitch. And this is how your work should be looking so far. Now you're going to go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up to the um, where you left off. And you're only going to make one round of one single crochet in every stitch. So go ahead and finish one round of one single crochet in every stitch around back to the yarn marker. Now, I'm going to show you how to make the front of the paw. So go ahead and take the yarn marker and move it up. And we're going to make 16 decrease stitches. I'm just going to show you four of them. But you're going to make 16 decrease stitches. And it's also called single crochet two stitches together. So you just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, you have two loops on your hook. Go ahead and go into the next stitch over. Bring up a loop. 
You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through all three loops for your decrease stitch. So that's one. We're going to make 16 of these, and I'm just going to show you four of them. Go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. Go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three loops for a decrease stitch. So that's my second. Third. And fourth. So go ahead, finish 16 decrease stitches. And you can go ahead and turn your work inside out as well so that the right side is facing you and the wrong side of course has the loose yarn in the middle. Make it easier for you to work your decrease stitches. And again, you need 16 decrease stitches and then come back. After finishing your 16 decrease stitches, you can see how you're forming the front of the paw. Then you're just going to make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches all the way back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches back to the yarn marker. Then when you get back to the yarn marker, go ahead and take the yarn marker and move it up. And you're going to make just one round of one single crochet in every stitch. So only one round of just one single crochet into every stitch around back to the yarn marker. Then go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up. I'm just showing you what it looks like so far. This time you're going to make eight decrease stitches. So I'll make the first one with you. We're going to make eight decrease stitches and then you're just going to make one single crochet into the remaining stitches. So go ahead, finish making eight decrease stitches and then one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches back to the yarn marker and then come back. This is what my paw looks like so far. You can see how you formed the front of your paw. Now my stitch count around is 24 stitches. Don't worry if yours is a little bit off, as long as you're close. But the thing is, you're going to have to make sure that each of your paws has the same number of stitches. So you want approximately 24 stitches around, and all four paws are going to be made the same way. So then, you just take your yarn marker and move it up, and you're going to make only one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 14 rounds. So 14 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. This is how my work looks so far. You can see the bottom portion of the paw and then I have 14 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. Then go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up to where you left off. We're going to make another increase round. You're going to make one single crochet into seven stitches and then two single crochet into the eighth stitch. Then go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So I just finished that increase round and I increased the stitches to a stitch count of 27. Then you're just going to take and move the yarn marker up and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of eight rounds and then come back. So this is how my 
paw looks like so far. I just finished my eight rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. Now you're going to make your last increase round. So go ahead and move the yarn marker up. For this increase round you're going to make one single crochet into eight stitches and then two single crochet into the ninth stitch. And repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. I had a total of 30 stitches after finishing that increase round. Then you're just going to take your yarn marker and move it up to where you left off and make one single crochet in every stitch around for eight rounds and then come back. Now you can go ahead and put your craft stuffing into the paw. I finished my eight rounds of one single crochet in every stitch and now I'm going to start the decrease rounds. So you can go ahead and move your yarn marker up to where you left off. Then you can make one single crochet into eight stitches. Then we're going to make our decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together. Just take your crochet hook, bring up a loop in the next stitch, go into the next stitch and bring up another loop, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decreased stitch. Then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker, one single crochet into eight stitches and then make your decrease stitch. Then you're going to make one single crochet into seven stitches and then your decrease stitch. Then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then one single crochet into six stitches and then your decrease stitch repeating that pattern. And then just continue each round decreasing just like I've been doing. So the next round will be one single crochet into five stitches and then your decrease all the way down till you're almost closed and then come back and I'll show you how to make decreased stitches and slip stitch For the mine, leg closed. I decreased down to one single crochet into five stitches and then made my decreased stitch. Then I went ahead and just removed my yarn marker and I started making decrease stitches all the way around until I couldn't make decreased stitches anymore. And then I started making my slip stitches to close. You could add more craft stuffing at this point if you wanted to, but I'm happy with the amount of craft stuffing that I have in mind. So now I'm going to go ahead and just slip stitch it closed. So I'm going to skip a stitch, go into the next stitch over, then I'm just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and just bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. And I'm just going to continue around just skipping a stitch going into the next stitch and then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and just bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch until the leg is completely closed and then come back. Then after the leg is completely closed you can go ahead and finish off just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work Then you can take your tapestry needle and just place the loose yarn end onto the tapestry needle and just go right in where you finished off and come out anywhere on the leg and just trim the loose yarn end. And like I said before, all of your paws are made the exact same way and you need four of these. Now you should have all of your legs finished. I have four of them and they're all made the same way. And the next thing we're going to do is just get our tapestry needle with the same colored yarn as your dog. Then after you have your tapestry needle and the same colored yarn, you're going to take the leg and line it up on the body where you want to have both legs in the front. So I placed mine onto the side of the body. Make sure that your paw is facing forward. And I'm about 
one, two, three, four, five rows down from the neck, or about an inch to inch and a half below the neck. Then, once you know where you want to place your leg, go ahead and remove the leg. Make sure you still have the paw facing forward, and you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to go into the leg at the top, and I'm about from the mat where we closed it, about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows down, centered with my tapestry needle, and then I'm just going to go through to the opposite side. Try to go between the stitches if you can with your tapestry needle. And then just pull the yarn through. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end on the end, so don't pull it all the way through and leave enough yarn hanging down. Then you can take, make sure that you know where you're going to go into the body. So I'm about five stitches down. Then you can move your leg aside so you can see about where you want to go into the body. So I know that I want to go through the body about this level. And then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and go through carefully to the opposite side. Make sure you come out about at the same level on the opposite side. Make sure you don't poke yourself. Grab that tapestry needle and bring it through. And you can leave about an inch to an inch and a half hanging on the other leg. You can see where I came through the other body, side of the body. And then you just grab your other leg, make sure that the paw is facing forward. And then you're going to go through at about the same level that you did for the first leg. And then just go through to the opposite side with your tapestry needle. Leaving about a couple inches between the paw and the body. And then I'm just going to go about a stitch over with my tapestry needle and go right back through the leg and I'm going to go really close to where I went into the leg about a stitch over with my tapestry needle and then you don't want to leave anything on this side of the leg then you're just going to go right back through the body about a stitch over from where you came out of the body and then you're going to come out on the opposite side. Make sure you don't poke yourself. And then you're just going to go about a stitch over. I'm trying to get about a stitch over in between the stitches. There we go. And then just pull that yarn through. And then you can see how I have both strands of yarn on the opposite side of the body and now I came out on this side of the body and then I'm going to grab the paw make sure you have it facing the way you want to and don't tangle your yarn and then just go about a stitch over on the leg and then go back through to the opposite side with your tapestry needle And then I like to go through twice before I cinch down the legs on the body. So go ahead, go back through twice, just like I did the first time, and then come back. So now I went through twice. You can see how I have the four strands of yarn on both sides of the body and on both sides of the legs. Then you can just pull the yarn through and cinch the arms down onto the body. Once I've cinched the arms, again, the front 
legs against the body. Then I can take and tie a knot. Make sure you don't pull it too tight and snap your yarn. This Karen one pound yarn is pretty thick so it would be hard for you to snap it but some people that use a softer yarn for this project may find that the yarn can break using this method. And I just love this method for the dogs because it's easy to get the legs on the body and the legs will move front and back. Then after you tie your knot, you just take your tapestry needle, put the yarn onto the tapestry needle, and then just take and go through with your tapestry needle where you tied your knot and come out anywhere on the leg. Pull the loose yarn end through and then just trim the loose yarn end. And that's how I bury my loose yarn ends. You're going to put the back legs on the same way and then come back. Now for the back legs, I just wanted to show you where I went into the body. So here you could see from the back, here's the magic circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. It's about twenty rows in is where I went on mine. And then I just made sure it lined up with the front so you don't have crooked legs. And this is what it looks like on the back after I finished putting on the back legs. To make the tail, you're just going to take the same colored yarn as your dog and you're going to drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers, we're going to make the magic circle. And then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. You're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. The first thing we're going to do is make a slip knot. Just yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot and then make six single crochet into the magic circle. Then just take your forefinger and thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet. You have those two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Close it as much as you can. If you don't get it completely closed, don't worry. We can close it more later. Then just take the loose yarn in and pull on that. Then turn your work. We're going to start working in rounds. So you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go into that first stitch. And then you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. And you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12 stitches. And then come back. Now you can take and turn the work over and close the magic circle if you need to by pulling on that loose yarn end on the back. Then just take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and you're only going to make one single crochet into every stitch around until you have the length that you want for your dog's tail. For my dog, I made 40 rounds. So 40 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. After you slip stitch and finish off, your tail is now ready to sew onto the dog. Just take your tapestry needle, put it onto the long end that you left for sewing. If you didn't leave a very long end, just get the same colored yarn. And then just place the dog, I mean the tail, onto the back of the dog. 
just position it where you want it and then once you have it positioned make sure you center it and then once it's centered in position then you just take your tapestry needle and you're just going to sew along the base of the tail so sometimes what I do is I just bring the tapestry needle up on the opposite side there of the tail and then I can go up through the tail at the base then you just take and sew all along the base of the tail and then I usually don't stuff the tail with craft stuffing I just leave it empty and then I just finish sewing all along the base of the tail and sew it then in place. my tail is in place now this part is optional but sometimes what I like to do is just paint the toenails for the dog so you just take the paw and then make sure you know where the center is so my center is going to be right here and then I'm going to count over one, two, three stitches and then I'm going to start three rows down. So then I'm going to go straight up with my tapestry needle and make sure you have the color yarn you want for the toenails. Then you just bring the yarn through. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end for tying a knot and burying the loose yarn end into your work. Then you're going to go straight down where you went in and then you're going to go over to the center. So that was over, here's one, two, three stitches to the center. So you can see how I went down into where I initially went in and then over one, two, three stitches into the center with my tapestry needle. Then you can pull the yarn through and then you have one side of the toenail finished. Then you're going to go straight down Make sure that you're equal with where you went in and then I'm actually, here's where I came up and this is one, two, three rows down. You're going to go in and then you're going to go with your tapestry needle. You want to go over three stitches, one, two, three, and then come up. with your tapestry needle at the same level as your other one. Then you can take and pull the yarn through and you can see how you finished the second toenail. Then you're going to go straight down at the same level and then you're just going to go right to where you initially went in in the very beginning with your tapestry needle. Then just pull the tapestry needle through and then you completed the toenails. So now you can take and tie a knot. I'm going to go ahead and trim my yarn. Make sure you leave again enough loose yarn end for burying the yarn into your work. And then just tie a knot And then what I do is just take the loose yarn end, put it onto your tapestry needle, and then you're going to go right in where you tied the knot and then go towards the back of the paw. And then just pull on that loose yarn end. And then just trim the loose yarn end on the opposite side and then you can kind of make it disappear within the paw. And then do that with both loose yarn ends and then that's how you can paint all of the toenails on the paws.